Hey, hi, howdy, and hello, friends. It's me, Wickedy. No, this isn't some broken bootleg Super Mario Brothers game. It's Stardew Valley, but like all Mario fied. Yeah, that's a word now. I went to the opening of Super Nintendo World in Hollywood and it inspired me. I'm going to play Stardew Valley turning Toad into the main character in his own Mushroom Kingdom. It's the Toad Farm where I'm going to play as Toad because I'm a fun guy. <laughs> so let's start out with turning Stardew Valley into something you might see in a Mario fueled fever dream with mods. With this challenge, I have the goal to turn Toad into a mushroom mogul with quite a few goals to hit along the way, like making money, getting Yoshi and marrying the princess. And I can only sell mushrooms to do it all. All right, I'm so excited to get this going. I made a whole bunch of custom sprites just for this, so forgive me if they look bad. I'm not the best at pixel art. I crafted this whole fit for Toad. It's pretty great if you ask me. I know you didn't, but if you did ask, I'd still say it was pretty great. The grass has mushrooms and the house and mailbox are mushrooms and the cursor is a mushroom. Oh, I love these mods. And yeah, the shipping bin is a pipe. What of it? It looks bad, but like, uh, I'll fix it later. On the first day of spring, I met the Princess Princess Peach, who is actually just in the Witness Protection Program or something and goes by the name of Haley now. Hi. Oh, this portrait mod I made looks so rough. Uh, kind of adds to the charm though. This is fun. I also crafted my first wooden chest, which is a question block. I'd wonder what's inside, but it's just a bunch of whatever I can dump in here. On the 5th of spring, I checked out the community center to get that started as I want some of the items I get from donating. I didn't go to the mines just yet, I'm gonna save that for later. On the 6th though, I got my very first mushroom. Love the forest farm. This is a morel and yes, it does look a bit uh, odd. I wanted the mushrooms I find to fit the theme so I changed them myself. Eventually, I'm gonna need a mushroom tree and the best way to get one of those is to leave a ton of fully grown trees on the farm. So I'm planting some early to get a head start for a nice organized mushroom tree farm maybe. On the 16th, I finally took the time to visit the wizard so I can start donating items to the community center and got some forage seeds. I'll need my foraging skill up eventually for fall seeds so these get planted and will be eaten but not sold. So Forage on the Farm collects over the season and I was able to get a few morels here. Four total, oh my goodness, they sold at the end of the season. Hello, my first shipping sheet, a whole 600 gold. Okay, wow, uh, so spring wasn't for the money, it was for leveling up that foraging skill and cleaning up the farm mess. Level five foraging is going to help so much with that double pickup chance. Now that it's summer, I'm getting some more trees down, gathering forage for the community center and planting just a few things. Eventually, I'm planning on wooing the princess and the best way to do that is with fire flowers. Everybody loves a fire flower, right? Okay, so they're just sunflowers, but these will be great gifts as it's her favorite. It's now the second day of summer and I have finally decided to grace the mines with my toad self to gather ore for sprinklers and maybe hit mushroom floors someday. And some of these monsters might be a bit different looking. I have a mod on that switches some of the monsters for classic Mario monsters and I really love that. Oh my goodness, I found myself a red mushroom on level 23 and it's silver quality. This will fetch me a decent price. Forage on the forest farm in summer is great. You can find common mushrooms here. I put a little Goomba face on them. Gotta say I love it. I made it to level 50 in the mines on my second day in and now I can start farming for ore to make all the sprinklers I can for growing my forage. The monsters on the frozen levels just kill me. I love the ghosts and the sprites and just look at the bats. Tuesday, the ninth day of summer and those fire flowers for my sweet princess peach are ready. I have a gold quality one too, and I'll need plenty more if I'm planning on making her my queen. But for now, I'm just gonna give her these flowers twice a week and keep them coming. Sweet. She really loves to keep her suitors waiting. On the 11th, I finally made my way down to the 80s where we have a much better chance of finding mushrooms. Once I clear up my way down a ways here, I'll be checking back frequently to find mushroom floors. That's going to pay all my bills for quite a bit. Take a look at the metal heads here too. They look fantastic. 
It's the 16th and I have finally found it. My very first mushroom floor. Oh my goodness. Level 98 has a ton and I'm so excited. Worth more than a diamond to me for sure. The purple mushrooms are now golden because they are so valuable and worth their weight in gold. I got lucky and found a second mushroom floor today too, letting me leave with the first massive stash of mushrooms selling for a whopping 4,843 gold. Even the alien was impressed. Now that I have a little money in my pocket, I have to prioritize what to spend it on. Getting my axe upgraded is my first task so I can get some hardwood in the future and get the secret woods mushrooms. I'll be needing a backpack upgrade here soon too. I picked up the stepping stone path recipe from Robins too. <laughs> Look, it's mushrooms. Now I don't want to go overboard with the pathing because the forage that can spawn here can be a mushroom. The rest of my summer routine is a whole bunch of this. Pick sunflowers for the princess, go to the mines, search all the levels for mushroom floors, collect ore for sprinklers, sell mushrooms, repeat. I don't know if mushroom floors show up less with poor luck, so I really only looked on lucky days because I need to find ladders to progress down in search anyway. The boiler room got fixed up on the 19th for minecart, so that's gonna save me some money at Joja later. And I opened up the secret woods on the 21st. No mushrooms here today though, but I'll be back. I also got my mushroom skill up high enough to be able to craft a lightning rod, or rather a flagpole, cause that's what I decided it should look like. I actually kinda love this hunt for mushrooms. I am getting so much. And look at these floating piranha plants. I really want one. Sometimes finding a mushroom floor isn't that great. Wow, <laughs> not even one. Uh, while I've been searching, I'm also keeping my eye out for magma and omni geodes so that I can get iridium and eventually smelt an iridium bar for reasons. Also slaying the shadowy guys too because sometimes they can drop bars. Fall is the season when hopefully things start to get really good. I have quite a bit of money and plenty of sprinklers for watering my fall forage. Fall seeds give me mushrooms, so getting these planted is going to help my mushroom colony expand. I'm going to find the forage for the bundle so I can get my free seeds in order to really up my mushroom production, but it took until the third to find all the forage I needed, and I was able to craft a few more. Yes, spread your spores and take over the world. Yeah! Oh, check this out, it's a new mushroom. The secret woods have chanterelles and mine are giving off big power up energy. My mushroom collection is expanding. Fiber is such an important resource, not only for your diet, but also for my mushroom tree chances. <laughs> Making tree fertilizer is going to help me grow these trees up big and strong, giving each one a small chance of maybe, just maybe, turning into a mushroom tree. I could have just let all the trees go wild and spread, but this is a farm and I'm a professional. I want to have a mushroom tree tappery if I can. I just need one of these to accept me as their true king, sacrifice themselves to my higher power, and take the fungal plunge. Oh, and now that fall is here, I have been sent on a mission for the wizard in another castle. He doesn't need saving, but he does want some spooky goo from a not so friendly boo in the mines. Once I got that, I delivered the good stuff and he was so grateful. I can't accept this money though, no mushrooms were involved in the earning of these funds. It's not what I was after anyway. Ah yes, the recipe to craft my very own warp pipes. Now this, this is going to help me get around the kingdom much better. I've been saving up my hardwood for my stable, but making these are going to make me happy, so I need to get more hardwood and a few more solar essences from boos and beetles. Oh, this is going to be so great. It doesn't sound like the warp pipes, but I'm happy enough with it. And it's about time to get a backpack upgrade. I've been scrambling to make one line of inventory work for far too long. As the smart toad I am, I've been hoarding magma and omni geodes, as many as I can, to bring over to Clint's to hopefully get enough iridium for a bar. I wish I could sell the extra stuff, but they just get donated or tossed. With a few omni geodes to spare, I got it. Iridium number five. I don't need to break anymore. This is perfect. Into the furnace you go. 
I am so happy I decided to upgrade my pickaxe too. These boulders were seriously bothering me, and I'll need to use it in Skull Cavern someday too. It's the 9th of fall and it's a big day today. I have finally sold enough mushrooms for Demetrius to come by and set up my cave and we are going with fruit. <laughs> no, no, it's, we're going with mushrooms. Now I just have to check the cave every day to collect my goods. The fall seeds have spread quite a bit and have given me enough seeds to fill out all of my sprinklers. Even though I can grow and sell mushrooms here, I don't think I'm going to plant any more than this section. Common mushrooms are great, but not as profitable as other mushroom methods that I have coming up. Saturday the 13th of fall and it's a goal completion day. Thanks to that Iridium bar, today I have enough money and resources to build my castle. I think it looks great, uh, very menacing. I have big plans for you, but it might take a little bit to set it up. Oh, silly peach. She needs some saving from a uh, pickle jar. Me being the strongest toad there is, I saved her from herself. Peachy. My castle is all good to go, but we are not going to need this slime egg that Marlin dropped on over, no sir. This isn't a slime hutch, it's actually a monster mushroom cave. I'm so excited, I'm going to be raising some mushrooms in here when I get the right stuff. I also figured a nice fence would really start to bring this kingdom to another level, it looks more legit. So it turns out in order for me to raise mushrooms in here, I need more than one life elixir to bring them to life. Oh, I wish I hadn't sold all my chanterelles and morels. That's okay, we have the mushroom cave, so I'm just going to keep collecting and stocking up until I have enough. And since it's the day of the fair, I brought out my beautiful display. What do you mean I didn't win? These are the best mushrooms in the land. Ugh, oh well, better gamble it all. Oh my, it has finally happened. I've been checking my trees every day and finally spotted my first mushroom tree platform. I want this to spread its spores so I cleared up some space around it. Soon, you will take over the entire kingdom. Of course, a tapper on here will give me mushrooms too. So it turns out I need five life elixirs to bring a mushroom to life in this cave, which is quite a lot. It'll be worth it though, but just going to take some patience. When my first little mushroom subject arrived on the last day of fall, I quickly saw that keeping a fence in here isn't going to do anything. It's okay though, my Goomba knows who their king is and won't even hurt me. Winter has come and now there aren't really a whole lot of wild mushrooms to be found. Hibernating sounds pretty good to me, but not without checking the mushroom cave every single day and keeping an eye on that mushroom tree. This tapper won't give me mushrooms I need until spring, but the spores, the spores are spreading. <laughs> yes, soon, soon we will overtake the valley with our mushroom glory. They won't grow right now, not without a little persuasion. You're going to grow up big and strong and cast your giant cap shadow over everything that belongs to me. The kingdom is a little lonely now that the snow's out, so I commissioned Robin to set up my stable. Don't judge it, I'm an artist. Of course, the name is Yoshi, and now I am filled with just a little bit more joy in my little toad heart. Things have been heating up between me and the princess. Maybe it's the fire flowers I've been gifting her, but I like to think that it's my stunning looks and winning personality. <laughs> Things are starting to get pretty yeah. serious. Mario who? <laughs> my Goombas, they are multiplying, but only because I keep making life elixirs and pop that in with a red mushroom into the propagator. Sadly, I can't breed them, but they do give me more mushrooms daily the more I have in here, so it's worth it. If only my mushroom cave would give me more green ones to make more life elixirs, I'd be rolling in fungi money. Each is such a princess. I have been stopping by all the time to gift her more fire flowers. This is fun. In bed, like the princess that she is. Peachy. Spring is back and with it the chance at more morels, which I need for life elixirs. Oh, and my mushroom trees have their caps back and are producing mushrooms in the tappers again. Now I'm going to need to clear some of these extras so they can get organized. They need just a little space in order for them to grow fully. Oh, the princess has finally gotten out of bed. How lovely. We spent some time bonding over cows and she changed her whole look for the snapshots. Way to be extra peach. This is fun. 
things are starting to get really serious and I've wooed the princess over to the way of the mushroom. So it's time to get my little mushroom house expanded so I can take this to the final level. I went to snag the pendant on the next rainy day to make my move and oh no, a princess in distress. Ah! Not that any princess needs saving, but as a good friend and soon to be fiance, I of course helped her out. Sweet. She showed me the negatives of our cow tipping photo shoot, then was positive that I was the toad for her, accepting my proposal to become a queen of my mushroom castle. Mm. Ah, Peach, you are making me the happiest toad king ever. I win! The rest of spring was spent making the princess happy with any leftover fire flowers I had and collecting copper in the mines. I needed to expand my mushroom tappers as more mushroom trees grow, so a lot of copper is needed and I am far too cheap to buy more from Clint. By the end of the season, I had 16 fully grown mushroom platforms and five Goombas in my mushroom castle. I sure do love Summer, but I'm not too sure Summer loves me. I need so much more copper to make more tappers for my beautiful mushroom subjects. The mines, though, blessed me with a crown because they knew I was royalty and dropped a living hat from some fiber that I didn't see until I already left, but it's fine. I reject any crown that isn't a mushroom. It's fine. After all my mushroom harvesting in my wonderful Goomba castle, it happened. Level 10 foraging means that all mushrooms I pick up in here will be of the highest quality, giving the most money for them. By the end of summer, after all of my mushroom selling, I am feeling pretty well off. I have nearly all the money I need. It's my second fall and of course, we are growing more fall seeds. Not so much for the money, I make so much more in the Goomba castle, it's more for the mushroom aesthetic. I decided to leave a ton of trees growing in hopes that this season it will bless me with a second converted mushroom tree, but time will tell. For now, I have nearly 30 tapped and producing. So I have money, but like any proper king, I'm a little cheap too. I have a bunch of leftover items to fill out the crafts room and also had the boiler room filled out because that saves me from having to buy those purchases from Joja Mart. I got the vault done too for the freebies. Joja gladly took my membership fee on the 6th. Now I just have to chip away at the other developments. Now, in order for me to collect every type of mushroom, I'm gonna need to fix Willy's boat, so the taking a little time to deep dive in Skull Cavern is essential for Iridium. I need only 25 ore, so that should be plenty. I did end up getting to a lower level, which means I got a free 10,000 from Mr. Key, so we gotta subtract that from the final number, but the ore has been gotten and smelted now. I ha just have to finish out the Joja form and have a party. Perfect. Soon Jojo will be carrying all of my mushrooms in their stores, they just don't know it yet. I'm getting so close to the end of total domination, I can feel it. I got my letter from Willy and fixed the boat, sending me on my way to expand out my kingdom. Okay, so the volcano is making me very nervous. This is normally Mario's area of expertise, but exploring here is necessary for golden walnuts to unlock the mushroom cave and collecting the last mushroom, the magma cap. Oh, it's pink, beautiful. I'd love some more, so I struggle bust my way up to the summit. I can't believe that the first two iridium nodes in the volcano both gave me my first and second prismatic shard, and I got a hammer from a chest too, which is beautiful. After releasing Professor Snail from the mushroom cave to liberate my mushroom brethren, it was back to the kingdom to incubate some magma caps for a new variation of Goomba. These ones are a little bit more chill, but they have wings and will give me more magma caps. Perfect. All right, all that there is left to do is to collect my mushroom cap hat. So the rest of fall is just collecting mushrooms daily and heading to bed. Winter came quickly and I just want my mushroom platform trees to spread. So I cleared out all of the other extra trees on the farm. Still a little sad that I didn't get a second tree to convert, but that's okay. Now it's hibernation time with only the occasional breaks to clear out the Goomba castle, which has a lot of money in mushrooms every week. I let those mushroom trees spread for nearly an entire year and collected about 60 fully grown mushroom trees and tons of little ones too. And it's time to thin the herd. Off with your head. You know, I'll let the rest of you live if one of you just offers me a mushroom cap. It took kind of a long while, but I've finally found one. 
I'm already in a choppy, choppy, off with your head kind of mood, so I cleared out the rest of the fully grown ones to let the little ones have room to grow, and I found a second mushroom cap. After tossing the rest of mushrooms I had in the shipping bin, I collected another 130,000. Now, with my two mushroom caps, I popped one on Yoshi's head. One of us. <laughs> And I grabbed a fish tank from Willy. I collected a sea urchin ages ago. It's a little spiny guy. Popped a mushroom cap on the little fella and now my toad time is complete. That's it, that was the last thing. Me as Toad started out as a humble landowner, moved on to a majestic king and slowly devolved into a fungal tyrant. <laughs> In my time, I shipped and sold only mushrooms, 37 morels, 17 chanterelles, almost 1,200 common mushrooms, 1,336 red, 585 purple, and 280 magma caps, earning me over 650,000 gold, taking away that key money. That's 3,450 mushrooms sold. Wow, <laughs> never again. If you like some of these mods, they are listed in the description too. I'm Wiggity, thanks so much for hanging out in the Mushroom Valley with me, and I'll see you next time. Bye!